So for any of you who follow me on my Instagram, you'll know that, um, specifically my art account, I will take characters, uh, specifically old action figures of mine, and I will combine them to make an original character. Sort of basing it off of the personality that I gave to that specific action figure. But then by changing up the formula, by adding uh, some color and maybe some flair and changing its design by combining it with a colorful little go-go figurine that I collected uh, many years ago. And for this specific design, I'm working with a pilot action figure that my buddy Zach hit with a wiffle ball bat at high speed, <laughs> which uh, broke it and sent the legs and one of his hands flying. Um, and what I've been doing whenever I come across one of my old action figures that has uh, stuff missing is I will incorporate uh, robotics into that. Um, and that's what I'm doing in this pre-sketch design. Um, and you might notice I'm holding a bionicle. I do indeed use those to <laughs> come up with poses. I find personally that they work better than those wooden dolls because you can get so many more interesting poses, at least, least ways to me. Uh, maybe you don't agree, but if you have bionicles, uh, using them for posing is a, is a good idea in my book. Uh, for this design in specific, I wanted to sort of incorporate maybe pieces of helicopter parts into the design of the animatronics. And you'll note specifically for the legs and the helicopter blade sword, uh, that's kind of what I'm going for. Uh, and originally I had thrusters, but that design doesn't stay. Uh, but you'll, you'll figure that out as we go along. Just a quick note about pre-sketching. Um, the, the more I draw, the more I realize how much planning is involved in making a piece that I'm going to be proud of. And when it comes to sketching, uh, which I prefer to do my first sketch in pen because it seems to flow easier, uh, there's less friction, and um, I found a, a pen that doesn't really smudge. I prefer to sketch that way, it's more loose. And if I make any mistakes, it's really not a big deal. Um, but the more you plan ahead, um, the better I find this step goes, which is uh, the pencil sketch, which is much more intimidating to me. It's kind of weird. You'd think it would be the opposite way around and that my first sketch would be in pencil um, as well. But I really don't like using pencil for my first pass because uh, the pen is unforgiving and it sort of forces you to work with what you got and uh, I like that and you can even see on the uh, pen sketch sheet to the left uh, you can see a bunch of little check marks um, and even an X over something I didn't like um, so just sort of combining things that work and leaving behind the things that don't uh, are, are a vital part and that that's all that's all just pre-planning that's all just figuring out what you like before it comes out on the page I think that for a lot of artists myself included uh, what I would do is I'd sort of just jump in blindly, and that may be fun, but if it doesn't go well, it just sort of stops your momentum, because if it looks like garbage, at least for me, I'd get really disheartened. Um, so getting all that out of the way early, as its own phase, <laughs> figuring out the stuff that doesn't look good and getting rid of it is a really good step to take um, for me. And I'll say this multiple times throughout this video, I'm sure, but this is by no means a how-to video. That's not what this is supposed to be. Um, this is just showcasing my personal process as I have developed it over years and years and years of practice. And this is the current style that works for me. And some of the things that I'm gonna be doing in this video are relatively new to me. I hadn't been doing them uh, even a year ago and you'll see that when we get to the inking process after we get this nice little scroll down of the rough pencil sketch. Now, probably like a year and a half ago, um, the style that I would use would outline the entire outer edge of any drawing, and then it would, uh, I would double up on that line, and it would be continuous. I wouldn't break it up at all. Um, and it really, it made it pop. It almost gave it like a sticker looking feeling, uh, but the borders were just so thick. And um, before I did that, what was even crazier is that all the lines, both outside and inside would be the same thickness. 
and it was like double lined and uh, it was just a little bit insane. And probably about a year ago, I switched over to like fine liners, which are fantastic because you can barely pick it up off the page um, and almost dot in some places and it makes it seem more lifelike, I guess. It seems less fake or phony. It, it really all depends on what style you draw. My style, I find, lies somewhere in between cartoonism and realism. Uh, it bothers me when things don't make sense in a design, so I never take it to that cartoony degree. Um, but I also don't like being too constricted uh, by anatomy that I just never start into anything because I'm too intimidated uh, to give it a shot. So my personal style falls somewhere in between being realistic and being a little bit more far-fetched. Um, but for this character, uh, I did draw both eyes because I wanted to make sure the hole in the visor uh, would make sense. And the idea for that hole in the visor came from that go-go. Um, there are like black designs around its eyes, and I really liked that look because it made the eye really pop. And so I decided to sort of co-opt that into having part of his uh, visor or his goggles being cracked or breached. And you could see his eye uh, behind it. Maybe it's a cyborg eye or something. Uh, I just really wanted to make it pop. And for this character, what I was trying to go for is like a downed pilot, severely injured, who demanded that his uh, Cybertronics be salvaged from his downed helicopter. Um, and that's how he got his blade, and that's how he got a majority of the mechanics for his legs and everything. Um, but yeah, and for this design, you see all this erasing that I'm doing. Um, it actually took me a while to find the right combination of fine liner and eraser that worked well on this watercolor paper, because sometimes it doesn't work. Um, this one, I was fortunate enough, after a lot of different trial runs, I found this one, and it works fine for me. So before you break into any huge project, make sure that your materials uh, communicate well with one another. Do some tests on different pieces of paper, and I find that uh, that will end up making the process go a lot better. And uh, here we're getting into part of the process. Uh, specifically, this is a watercolor. Um, and this is something I didn't do until 2021, this year. I really didn't do watercolor. I did colored pencil for many years in fact all the colored pencils that are in my like my pencil bag are still from like middle school and high school like in some of them like the black colored pencil is crazy crazy short uh i never <laughs> replaced it but um i pretty much just did um colored pencil all this time and i would just see stuff on instagram where i loved the 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 coloring of watercolor i appreciated that you could get some bold colors, but I also appreciated the more mellow tones that you could get with watercolor, and also just like the variation. It just looks different. Um, and you know, for like for the gray on the uh, the robotic legs, I didn't want to go super super dark. And when you work in colored pencils, it's very very easy to go darker than you mean to, and erasing it's a big pain. Uh, so watercolor, just you add a ton of water <laughs> to whatever pigment you're using, um, and then you can build off of that if you want it to, to be darker. Um, but for this design, since I knew that the um, the top, the torso, and the arms, I was working with darker colors, also with the uh, straps of like the belt, and the shoulder pads, and the elbow pads, I knew that all that stuff was going to be darker, and so I didn't want to also make the legs super dark, I wanted it to sort of contrast and give the mechanical legs um, a more streamlined, more literal, uh, polished look. I wanted them to look shinier. Um, like this guy is fresh off, off the lot and he is ready for combat. And, you know, it's sort of interesting, characterization wise, um, I, you know, in an odd way, I owe Zach a huge thank you because before the incident that cost this guy his legs, uh, in his hand, I mean, he was just pilot. He was just a pilot dude. Um, but in the process of sort of transcending these childhood characters, I sort of get to take their individuality and use that and sort of push that into their character. Um, this guy is special because he survived that incident. I still kept him. I didn't throw him out. He was uh, permanently changed by that event. And when it comes to characterization, you know, I wanted to sort of transcend that as well. 
because from that point on, he wasn't just a pilot action figure that I had. He was the pilot action figure that lost his legs in his hand. And for the hand design, I didn't really talk about it in the pre-sketch, um, but I sort of just took a basic principle of the legs and sort of just shortened it for the, the hand and the wrist and everything. Uh, nothing too complicated there. Uh, I think with mechanics and robotics in general, the hardest part to like for me creatively is breaking up the patterns and the designs, making pieces that overlap or fit nicely together, because uh, that's a whole different part of my brain that I have to think on while I'm doing the initial sketch, because otherwise it's just going to become a huge pencil mess and it's going to be all smudgy and smeary um, and it's not going to end up looking very good. Um, but there's not too much more of this guy left uh, to watercolor. Um, my camera shut off prematurely, but it's just as well because all that's left is to add the uh, shading, which I basically just used like a nice mellow purple. I don't know why. I saw something online that says don't shade <laughs> with black. And so I took that to heart. I mellowed out a nice like purple or a maroon and it ended up working really, really nice. Added a couple touches, shaded where I needed to, figure out where the light hit, uh, colored everything in, the darker parts with black, and this is the final product. And I have to say, I'm pretty proud with how it turned out. So yeah, that's uh, my process, start to end. Thanks for watching.